Bradford is in Luton for us now. Uh, so, Neil, are we any closer to knowing who it'll be tonight or not? Well, Jonathan, after almost a year of uncertainty, the workers here in Luton were under no illusion that today's visit to Ellesmere Port would leave them knowing any more about their future than they already do. A decision is expected sometime next week, with that being finalised by October. For the workers here, that couldn't come soon enough. We've been waiting for quite a long time now, but uh, I'm expecting it to be a few weeks or months before we really know what's happening. Everybody wants an answer of what's going on. Well, I just work for a contractor, so we're in the same boat as Premier, uh, as um, all IBC staff at the minute. Hopefully we'll find out what's going on. The only thing we can do is come at work. If we want to come at work, we want to work, but we'd like to know what's going on. The management are uh, feeding us information quite well, so let's hope Mr Mandelson has a bit of luck. Well, three weeks ago, the business secretary, Lord Mandelson, visited the production line here in Luton. He talked to employees, unions and Vauxhall representatives. And today, three hours up the road at Ellesmere Port, he repeated that exercise at Vauxhall's car plant. Now, I was looking out for any change in language, any change in government position, but there didn't appear to be any. The question for us is production at what level? Uh, of what models uh, involving how many ships and how many people employed going forward and, uh, and until what time into the future. Now all these are details which are going to come under very close scrutiny and negotiation in the coming days uh, and I and the British government are going to be at the table negotiating those details. Well, there are currently three bids on the table, one from Canadian car parts firm Magna, another from a Belgian firm uh, called RHJ and the Beijing Automotive uh, Industry uh, Association. Now, those bids are being scrutinized at the moment by General Motors. They will be in talks with the German government who, uh, uh, who have given a bridging loan for GM Europe in the coming days. Now, Lord Mandelson has said that any of those companies who promise to guarantee the future of British jobs will have their loan underwritten to the tune of some 500 million pounds but he has warned that whoever takes over General Motors Europe uh, then sorry about all the beeping whoever takes over General Motors Europe there will be some job losses inevitable all right Neil well carried on we got the gist of that thank you very much indeed and next tonight the ban on fox hunting has it made a difference when it was introduced four years ago, Hunt supporters warned that the ban would devastate our rural communities. But today at the festival of hunting in Peterborough, business was booming. Hunters say more foxes are being killed than ever and there's a new generation joining traditional hunts. Claire McGlasson reports from the East of England showground. He's just 17, but this apprentice has already got his life mapped out, pinning his hopes and his future on a career in fox hunting. And I just love the fox sound and I love working with animals. I couldn't honestly see myself doing anything else. Peter is training to be a whipper in, looking after 80 hounds at the kennels in Bury St Edmunds. He signed up to an apprentice scheme run by the government. That's the same government that introduced a ban on fox hunting in 2005. Back then the picture was gloomy. Warnings that a ban could put kennels out of business and up to 13,000 people out of a job. But not a single hunt has closed. According to the Countryside Alliance, fox hunting is now more popular than ever. Since the ban, the number of paid up members has increased by 5,000 to 45,000 people. And there are now more hounds being bred. Business is booming for companies like Horace Batten from Ravensthorpe in Northamptonshire. Last year we would have made more boots. Probably last year was a record year for us, I would think. So has anything actually changed? Let's be clear about this. This ban isn't really a ban at all, is it? Foxes are still being killed by oh, dogs. Well, they're not just by dogs. This, this law doesn't stop you killing foxes. I'm sure that more foxes have probably been killed since the ban came, in, came into place and before it. If you wear a red coat and sit on a horse, then you can't kill foxes. But you can trap them, you can shoot them, you can do anything like that to them. Have the animal rights groups who campaigned for the ban inadvertently caused a boom in fox hunting? Even though we're fully aware that there are still hunts out there breaking the law, this isn't a reason to repeal this. Um, the same as we wouldn't wish to repeal the Theft Act because people are still out there stealing and burgling houses, we really need to look for better enforcement of this. But there was real optimism today at the Festival of Hunting that the ban could be lifted. 
and as early as next year. If power is handed over to a new government in the next general election. Claire McGlasson and Lee News at the East of England showground in Peterborough.